Hello everybody, Sarah here again from SH Millinery and this video is a tutorial showing how to put together my own design for an eight section traditional Baker Boy Newsboy cap and the pattern is available to purchase in my Etsy shop and there will be a link coming up and also you will find a full link in the description below. This image shows the seven pages of the pattern. Now the pattern has two designs, one with a cap band, one without, and it has three sizes, a small 21 inch, a medium 22.5 and a large 24 inch head and man's head size really. Now, you can decide which pages you actually want to print, depending on the hat you're going to make. And the first one I'm going to make does not have the hat band, so I wouldn't need page one, four or seven. For this tutorial at the beginning, I'm going to be cutting the large size. So I just need the crown and the brim. Later in the tutorial, I will be making medium size and I will be using the headband. So I'm going to cut out the pattern for the crown and cut my fabric. So as you can see I've cut out all eight pieces of the crown um, and I think my pattern matching will be okay. So I'm going to put those aside for a second. It's lovely fabric this. And I've got to do the same cut out eight in lining and I've decided to do this pretty floral cotton um, inside because it's got sort of toning colours. Now because I don't have to pattern match this, hooray! <laughs> well you could if you're being really particularly but I'm not going to be. I'm going to fold my fabric and cut them all out in sort of one hit, if possible. Just check I've got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got my lining pieces and I've got my crown pieces. And now I have to cut my brim. So we're cutting two in fabric and one in a heavyweight interfacing. Now, the interfacing I'm using is extremely thick. It's iron on on one side, it's very heavy. It's used for pelmets and lampshades and things like that. If you haven't got very heavy, I would suggest you cut two of interfacing because you don't want your brim to be floppy. Now, what I'm gonna do is cut off the seam line on the pattern. Now bear in mind because you've got a PDF you could print off another another piece for this. You don't have to do it this way but I just feel it gives a much better finish when you're sewing the brim together because you only want the interfacing inside the seams. So you cut it off like that that's your interfacing piece now again because this is so heavy this I can't pin to it very easily so I'm going to pencil where I need to cut Then what I do is just the very end corners, I snip off because they can be a bit too sharp. So just like that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to iron this to the reverse of one of my brim pieces. Would you believe what I was ironing this on? The steam had melted my nail varnish and it had gone all over it. Never mind, it's going to be inside. 
Right, so I need to put these two pieces together. I can't remember which is the right side and wrong side. I don't think it does have one. So put them together like this. And pin them where we're going to stitch them. And we're also going to run a stay stitch along here when we've done it afterwards. So I'm just going to pin it all together to keep it in place. Now what we're going to do is stitch along here as close to this as possible. Right, so I've got my two pieces of cap and my interfacing here and I'm going to stitch round. So, like this. Right, when you've stitched, when you stitch around the edge there, you've then got to trim that seam quite close, a couple of mils away. And what we've got to do is turn it inside out. This didn't stick very well, never mind. In fact, it didn't stick at all. <laughs> and we've got to press it so that it's nice and smooth and even. And then I'm going to top stitch it. Okay. So we pull up the edges. You want it tight into the seam. Right, so I've turned it around the right way. This, this fabric frays a lot. Now what I'm gonna do is run a stay stitch all the way along here up against the edge of the buckram, uh, the, the, the uh, interfacing. And what I'm gonna do is do a larger stitch because it's literally just got to hold it in place while I make the rest of the hat. Okay, so I've run a stitch line around there because to keep it in place and because it's very, very thick and frays a lot. Now I'm going to run a top stitch around this edge to keep all this neat and tidy. Okay. Now we're going to move on to joining the crown. So here I have all my pieces of the crown and I've got to join two together. Now it would be a good idea to pin this if you're having to pattern match so that you can get your pattern matching. <laughs> I do talk rubbish sometimes. So I'm joining two pieces at the moment. And I'm using a 10 millimeter seam that's marked on my machine. 
so you're starting here and then going all the way down. So I've sewn down that side and I've got to open it out and I've got to attach the next piece here. Now I'm, I'm just checking for my pattern matching and that's not too bad. If you want to top stitch, you need to do it as you go. And I am going to top stitch mainly because this um, fabric frays so much. Okay. So I've joined those two pieces together and they're top stitched and now I've got to join a third to them. So just check I've um, got my fabric around the right way. And again I've got to match up the patterns so I'm putting three pieces together. And I'm going to match it from the bottom. So now I'm going to top stitch those two pieces as well, that seam as well. So I've joined three together and now I've got to join the fourth piece onto here. So now we've made two halves. We've got four pieces sewed together there and four pieces together there. So now we have to put them right sides together and sew all the way along to join them together and again I'm going to try and keep my pattern matching so now all the pieces are sewn together and we have the hat and I'm pleased with my pattern matching and everything in the middle there we've now got to attach the brim now what we have to do is stitch it on this way round and Get the middle of your brim and mark it with a pin. Just make sure that is the middle. Yep. So that's the middle of my brim. Decide whereabouts your brim is going to go. I'm just, I haven't pressed this yet, but uh, you can either put it in the middle of a section or right on the line but I would like to do it on the middle so I'm going to pin it there and go around to here and now I'm going to stitch that to the hat There. Now stay stitch wasn't vital, it was just that this fabric is very loose weave and I didn't want it to stretch. So that's our brim sewn onto the cap as you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it a little bit and I'm going to do another run of stitching on it because again it's very fray. So the cap is pretty much all in one piece now. And now we have to do the lining. So we have to join all the lining pieces exactly the same way that we did the hat. So putting the right sides together. But of course now you do not have to top stitch, just stitch them together. So as you can see, I've joined all the lining pieces. So in effect we have a we have another hat. Now we've got to join these two together. So we put them right sides together. We fold that brim in so it's out of the way. And we put one over the top 
of the other. And now what we've got to do is stitch these two together, but leave a gap to turn out. So try and match up your um, seamed segments all the way around and again over the brim and we're going to stitch these two and I'm going to leave a gap um, near the back of about three inches to turn out. So I've stitched all the way around and I've left a gap for turning out so we've now got to turn the lining to the inside of the hat and it's a bit fiddly because obviously the thicker your fabric the more of it you've got. So pull it through bit by bit. Okay, so we're all out now. So what I'm going to do is now stitch stitch the uh, gap down together and then I'm going to run sorry folks I'm going to stitch the gap down together there like that now bear in mind if you use fabric like this which is a very loose weave you could sometimes end up with the fabric stretching so it is a good idea to run a stay stitch to stop everything stretching and uh, you'll end up with a much larger hat. So, but that's just because of this fabric, because it, it has got such a loose weave. Right, now the last thing to do uh, when you've made the cap is to make the button for the centre. Now you can use any button. You decide what size you want your button. Use any button and we're going to cover it. So we get our button and then we roughly cut a circle that will reach over into the middle of the button. So like like this. And then we're going to run a gathering thread and I'm going to just do it on the sewing machine. So you want a wide, a wide stitch, and uh, off we go. when we pull up the bobbin thread so that we can gather this round the button. So I've got some a strong thread and a needle here and I'm going to push it through the top there and just keep stitching over and over till I've pulled it all tight and it's not going to come apart and fray. So you don't particularly have to use cover it, you know, specialist cover buttons. You can just use any buttons and cover them. Everyone's got a few buttons in their stash that they're not very fond of. Trim off some of the excess. Let's keep stitching. When you think you've stitched it enough, 
So you can again trim off any straggly bits. That gets stitched to the top of the hat like that. What I normally do is stitch all the way around so it's it's flat and firm. So I'm going to stitch like this. So I've stitched my lining to the inside and I've just top, briefly top stitched there. But what I like to do is add Petersham ribbon to the inside. So I'm using millinery Petersham and I will be, oop, wrong way around. There we are. I will be putting this round on the inside like so and I'm just going to hand stitch that in but that is um, up to you whether you do that or not so I'm just going to get on with that. Hello here I am making the tutorial for my Baker Boy cap pattern and I'm on to the second part of the tutorial which is the cap with the optional headband. Now I've cut eight pieces of the cap, as you can see, eight crowns. I thought I'd go with some jazzy furnishing fabric. And I'm going to start stitching these together. So put them together like this, your first two right sides together and stitch down. And as I've said before, I've got a 10 uh, millimeter seam allowance so once you've got two pieces together you've got to put the third on and then the fourth so we're going to fold that over match up the edges again and go so we've got to join four pieces and then join the other four pieces so what one shall I have now once you've got the four there together and the four there together we need to put them together and sew all the way around and join them together oh it's cut off all my long ends So now we have, in effect, the top of the hat. Now we've got to do exactly the same, join all eight pieces together with the lining, and I'm just using plain white lining. I've also cut my two pieces of brim and my um, stiffening, and this is very heavyweight pelmet stiffening. So I'm going to put these right sides together and I'm going to stitch all the way around here, joining this edge. Once you've given it a good press, we need to stay stitch this edge. So we'll put it on a long stitch. Now because I'm doing the cap with the band, I've cut two bands out as you can see here okay. and I'm going to have to stitch my brim to a band so get your middle point like so and your middle point of your brim so you know where your middle point is and the middle point of your fabric right sides together like so and we've got to stitch this carefully all the way around 
it is quite difficult because you're stitching a straight edge to a curve edge so you'll have to pull the curve straight so that you can actually pin I did that the way all the way along so you've got something that looks like that don't worry about where your stay stitching is because you can take that stitching out afterwards so what I've done is I've sewn the brim to one of the upstands okay now what I need to do is stitch the other piece right sides together all the way along and again Try and match your centres to your centres all the way to the end. And we've got to press that together. So I'm going to go and press that on the iron now. So I've pressed it flat with the iron. Um, now I... So I'm just going to measure around. So what I'm going to do is just put these two pieces together for a minute and just measure around and see how, how I am on size, brim, piece. I'm just going to do, do that quickly. Now what you need to do is check it against your hat, check it's the right measurement and it's going to fit round and then open out each end and stitch them together here. And if you're thinking this doesn't look anything like the brim she had a minute ago, I've had to refilm this section because I knocked the camera with my foot and realised it wasn't really showing what I was doing. So now we have our headband and what we've got to do is press it all the way around and we're going to put a stay stitch in the top of the band all the way around. So in effect you've now got a double band like so. Hope that makes sense. So what I've done now is I've joined that into a circle and I'm just going to run all the way around the top with just a holding stitch just to hold those two pieces of fabric together so you should press it first but I haven't done that there we are so that is now going to fit to my hat. So where your front's going to be, where your back's going to be, etc. And decide how you're going to fit it. So what we want to do is right sides to right sides, sort of. Because I think I'm going to have that as my top. I know I'm going to have that as my top cap. <laughs> So I'm going this way round. Sometimes it's easier just to line up your um, middles via a seam, but I don't want to do that. Hang on, let's just double check my middle.
So now I'm going to stitch these two pieces together. Check that everything has been caught in properly all the way around. And you haven't got any bits that have not caught or bits that look funny. Honestly, I'm turning into a static person. So right now, so we've now got to add our lining. So once you've got your lining put together in exactly the same way you did the cap, we've now got to join the cap to the lining. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it like that. And I'm going to put it like that, right sides. Right on the shoulder. So what I'm gonna do is sew it to the stitching here. But what I need to do is leave a gap so that I can turn it round the right way. Okay. So make sure you don't catch the actual cap in. You've only got to cap, catch the band in to the um, lining. Sure, I've taken all my pins out. Yeah. Might give it a press or a steam, and all you've got to do then is catch stitch. Your area that you left open, you just got to catch stitch that in like that with some hand stitching and trim up all your edges and whatnot, and your hat is finished. And if you want to add a button to the top, you can. So that's the one with the band, and you can either have the band or no band. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks a lot.